A proud supporter of this program, Riverbend Food Bank's vision is a hunger-free Iowa and Illinois. Whelan Presley Funeral Home and Crematory has been serving Quad City families since 1889. Whelan Presley Funeral Homes are located in Rock Island, Milan, and Reynolds and are proud supporters of WQPT. Are you ready to caucus? There are changes this year and a community university makes a Quad City comeback in the cities. Iowa's first in the nation caucuses are hours away. That means all those ads will soon be gone, at least for now. But the Iowa campaign is more than just advertisements and candidates holding meet and greet sessions with potential supporters. And on Monday, Iowa voters will prove that. So today, what every Iowa voter and potential voter should know about Monday's caucus and what can you expect at precincts in eastern Iowa? The chair of Scott County Democrats, Alicia Gaiman, joined us to talk about that and what you can expect at more than 1,600 precincts all across the state of Iowa. So you have to deal with precincts that are large and small. Correct. And even in Scott County, we have some that will be getting uh, electing 10 delegates that night and some that will only be electing one delegate that night. Uh, so we have a wide range in Scott County. We're anticipating about 17,000 folks to come out and caucus in Scott County. Let's take me through the process. I'm thinking of caucusing for the Democratic Party, and it's the same for the Republicans, actually, is that you have to be there by 7 o'clock. If you show up at 7.05, you've got to be in line mm -hmm. by 7 o'clock. You cannot be late. It's sim yeah, similar to when your, your polls close for voting. If you're in line, you get to still vote. Um, but if you're not in line by that time, you're out of luck. Um, Fortunately, though, in the caucus experience, if you are out of luck but still want to witness, you can actually go in as an observer. You just won't have your, your caucus um, vote counted. There are a lot of people who are Republicans or Democrats or Independents. This is not an open process. No, it is not. You do have to be a Democrat. As I mentioned, it is a party process, so it's the Democrats selecting their nominee. Um, the same goes for the Republican. If you have a, uh, if, if you're Independent or a Republican want a caucus for the Democrats, you're more than welcome to. We have voter registration forms there, but you will have to register that night as a Democrat. That was the big problem four years ago in so many different precincts across Iowa mm -hmm. is that you actually weren't expecting that onrush of people and you ran out of voter registration mm -hmm. forms. How are you trying to make sure that doesn't happen this time? We are totally overshooting on all of, uh -huh. <laughs> all of our uh, forms. And we also are in Scott County, we'll have a war room kind of set up and have um, supplies ready on standby. If we know that we're getting low in a precinct, we're gonna have volunteer runners. Um, a lot of Illinois residents actually are coming over to help us manage that and um, get those forms out to the different precincts that may need them. Now anything prior, I mean like pre-registering or pre-anything on the computers, the deadline's already come and gone, Correct. right? I mean, it wasn't yes. January 17th, yes. I believe. Yes, and then accommodation requests were, I think, the 23rd. If folks still If you need... had special needs and mm -hmm. you were showing up at a precinct. Yeah, so we could get interpreters and everything lined up. Um, if there are still needs, of course, we're going to try to accommodate folks, but we definitely need to know sooner than later. Um, and folks can email us at info at scottcountydems.org. And I think that's important because when you think... I'm going back to uh, the, the 1990s when uh, I, I first started covering the caucuses, and, and it it, it, it was quaint. I ended up in somebody's home in Muscatine County where they had a group of supporters in the kitchen, another group in the living room, and one person who couldn't pick standing in the doorway between two, and I thought that was the perfect, perfect analogy. analogy for the <laughs> Iowa caucuses, but you can't have that anymore mainly because of ADA requirements, and you want to be as accessible as possible. Correct, yeah, people's homes are not always made to, you know, yeah. have wheelchairs come up and in them. Um, it's also a lot of work for an individual <laughs> to have people and strangers traipsing in and out of their houses. Um, but we do have some smaller locations especially out in rural parts of Scott County. We're in a couple volunteer fire departments or community centers. Um, so it is still going to be very quaint. It'll still be a small number of people. Um, but we also, the whole entire city of Bettendorf will be caucusing down at the Waterfront Convention Center. So um, they'll be separated out by their precincts, but we have all of Bettendorf in one location. Okay, let's go through the process once again. And we're going to talk about viability, so please hang on. <laughs> you have some changes. Okay, so everybody shows up, 7 o'clock, the doors open, and then what? Basically, they'll be welcomed. Candidates will have the chance, or not, maybe we'll get a presidential But candidate. mostly representatives. <laughs> mostly a representative from the campaigns. We'll give a few words on behalf of that candidate, and then folks will 
go into their first alignment process and they'll have a minimum 15 minutes to work the room and find out where they want to land at the end of that well, and with 12 candidates that could take a while yes All yes right. and caucus chairs can actually make this um, they have the authority they have to do it at least 15 minutes they can make it longer if they'd like um, and then folks are basically once they're in a group we talk about viability and find out where we go from there now there's a couple different words that people may not have heard before. Mm -hmm. One is the viability, mm -hmm. the other one is the alignment. So your first alignment or the first vote, so to speak, you have to pick your candidate and be in a group. Mm -hmm. The smallest group cannot have less than 15% support of the entire group. Mm -hmm. So that is where the viability question comes yes. in. Yes, and actually in four smaller groups, like if you are only electing one delegate, just to make it even more complicated for mm -hmm. people, the uh, one delegate, then the entire precinct will vote on, on that delegate together. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, for most precincts in Scott County, it's going to be that 15% threshold. Um, it'll be posted otherwise if it's another number. Um, but it is there to kind of move things along. Another change this year is once you are in a viable group with 15%, you stay in that group. You're not allowed to move around to other groups or go back and forth. So your vote stays, mm -hmm. but we were talking about you, you physically, physically can, can leave. Go. If you have a babysitter to okay. relieve or So if Sanders, shift, yeah. Biden, Warren, Buttigieg have the viability, mm -hmm. they're going to keep it. Mm -hmm. The real question is if anybody else doesn't, where do they, they go, go among those selections? Yeah, and that's why a lot of folks get frustrated because they may have selected their candidate and they're still getting contacted by other campaigns. And the point of that from the campaign's perspective is they want those number two choices. They want to be your number right. two if they're not your number one. Because on caucus night, if there's not viability in that precinct, they can um, you know, possibly pick up more supporters. Now here, just to make it a little more complicated, <laughs> Iowa Democrats may actually be announcing three different winners, potentially not likely, but three different winners caucus night. The first announcement is the initial alignment mm -hmm. and who actually got the most first votes. The second announcement will be after everyone has voted after that second alignment where the, uh, the people that didn't get the 15% mm -hmm. where they all went. What is the third announcement? Well, it, overall, um, the overall delegate count. So you're going to see a couple different numbers coming in um, throughout the state. Uh, they factor that out. Scott County will be electing 300 delegates. So across Scott County precincts, we'll have 300 that and, will be selected that And night. it's 300 delegates to the county. Uh -huh. Then it goes to the district. District. Then it goes to the state. So it gets Correct. winnowed down. Yes. But here's the difference, my understanding, is that it used to be for the Iowa caucuses, for the Democrats, is that the number of delegates for a particular candidate could slowly change in each of those three maneuvers. From oh, absolutely. And I think in 16 we saw that. Sanders and Clinton both had a very skeleton crew of people they left behind in the state to mm -hmm. keep, they're kind of like a whip. So they're there mm -hmm. to kind of whip their, their supporters in shape and make sure they At didn't the deflect to the other side. Yeah. Right. So um, there will be a little bit of jockeying and I think as close as this race as every indication has, has shown us will be, um, I anticipate a couple of the campaigns doing the same this year as well. Okay, so if you're a caucus goer, I apologize. That <laughs> explains what's going on. You don't really have to worry about that. Yeah. It's going to be talked about, it's going to be settled, it's going to be uh, different than it was, and you're saying it's going to be quicker. Yes, and because we're only doing that second alignment, through that second alignment, hopefully it speeds things up. The other thing that we'll add, we have added this year is the preference card, so folks will actually sign their name to a preference card, and this will give us an opportunity to have a recount if we need it, and also a paper trail to make sure that everything's on the up and up, we can stand by our results, and if anybody questions it, we'll be able to go back and track where people were at. Because let's take a look, four years ago between Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton, it was a difference of 0.3%. Mm -hmm. The Republicans, eight years ago, it was a difference of 34 votes between Rick Santorum and uh, Mitt Romney. So, I mean, it's, it could be very, very close mm -hmm. in Iowa. And, and so the, the registration cards, the voter preference cards, actually give you a chance to do a recount, and there's something there yeah. that's physical that you can yeah, check. Yeah, and we definitely want, fo we want the process to be transparent, obviously, um, but we also want people to have confidence in the system. We don't want people to be questioning, you know, were these results accurate? We want that ability to go back. And so I think it's a really positive of change for the caucus and I think people will enjoy that future. Okay, we talked about the mechanics, let's talk about the politics right now. We've got impeachment hearings going on right now. Is this more for Democrats than, well let's be honest, there, there's two things, there's either issues or the current incumbent president mm -hmm. that's spurring Democrats. There's a lot of people that believe that this could be a record turnout for the Iowa caucuses for Democrats. Is it partly because of the impeachment hearings and this president? Um, I don't know. I the, the impeachment question isn't coming up at the events I'm attending. Um, it initially was 
was, whether or not it was going to happen. Um, but we really haven't seen a lot of attention or um, questions being asked in that regard by to the candidates. Um, but I really think genuinely the interest is there's so many diverse candidates that it's just, there's no, you know, I can't even say a demographic that's going towards each. It's, they're all over the map. And I've also talked to a lot of folks that aren't undecided. And we've had a large number of undecided voters really late in the game, which is unusual. I mean, people usually break about a month out, but we're still large numbers of undecided. And they're really waiting, I think, for that last touch. But a lot of folks I've talked to said they could support any of the candidates, and they're just kind of waiting to see who comes out on top. One thing, though, is that uh, the uh, people that are going to be caucusing are losing out on three minority candidates that mm -hmm. have already dropped off. You talk about Cory Booker, Kamala Harris, and, and Julian Castro. Minority candidates had mm -hmm. already dropped off before the Iowa caucuses. The Iowa caucuses are already being criticized mm -hmm. for being uh, uh, too white and, mm -hmm. and not really representing minorities. Is this a huge loss for the Iowa caucuses? Um, when we do get that criticism, my, my response is always remember Barack Obama. <laughs> so, um, you know, he won resoundingly in Iowa. So I don't think that Iowans aren't ready to elect a person of color. Um, into a, a position coming out of Iowa. Uh, but I do think there's some disadvantages. I think Cory Booker had some very valid points. Um, he was competing very well in Iowa, but nationally was not pulling the money and the numbers he needed to nationally stay in the race. Um, and I think that's really good why Iowa has that focus is because you're starting on a smaller playing field. Um, this cycle, we've seen 12 Democratic debates, I think at least, maybe 14, I can't quite recall. Um, but, you know, in the Hillary Clinton, Obama 08 cycle, we saw three debates ahead of it. So, I mean, there's there's a lot of more national focus on these races than there has been in previous years. And I think that overall that shows the detriment of not having a, having a candidate that's either not self-funding or not, you know, independently wealthy. Does it appear that, uh, that the debates are actually winnowing even before the Iowa caucuses occur? And if that's the case, the debates were really based on who, po based mm -hmm. on polling numbers more than mm -hmm. anything else. So polling numbers are are actually winnowing out the field for the Democrats. Yeah, I think, you know, it's been a struggle. It's it's mm -hmm. it's reassuring as a Democrat to see so many talented people in the pool and wanting to, to take on um, President Trump. But at the same time, um, you know, the DNC is going to have some hard decisions to make whether or not this, this model works and whether or not it'll be a model they want to use going forward. How tough will it be for a Democrat to win Iowa in November? Because if you think about it, uh, Donald Trump was winning by, a, mm -hmm. I don't remember what the exact end vote in November, but I remember him being six points ahead in polling. Mm -hmm. um, but on the other hand, Iowa Democrats were able to turn the House delegation from Iowa mm -hmm. from Republican to mostly Democrat as well. W what's your feeling? Because it is kind of a purple state. Well, and after Absolutely. And you see a lot of counties that went for Obama and then went for Trump. I mean, I, that's something the Democrats here need to pay attention to. Um, but I think in the end, it's the vision that the candidates put forward. I'm excited that when I go to these events, I'm hearing candidates put forward their plans and their visions and not necessarily just tearing down the president um, because that's what voters want. You know, Obama won. He won on hope, that vision of hope. Um, and Trump had a good slogan with Make America Great. That was a vision that people could grasp easily. They understood what that meant and that they supported it. Um, so I, I really think whoever is going to come out with the sharpest vision that speaks to the most Americans will, will come out on top, especially in Iowa. James Carville always said it's the economy, though. I mean, and the economy is doing mm -hmm. relatively well. I know there's people that there's always going to be the haves and the have nots, mm -hmm. but that's got to be a tough issue for Democrats to actually press that case against the president. Well, yes and no. I would, I would think in other areas of the country it might not be uh, or might be a little bit more um, difficult to challenge the president. Here um, with the ag community, farmers are hurting. Um, this trade war with China did not help the, the economic situation. Um, and you've also just got um, overall, you know, they've, they've been battling floods and different natural disasters. And so they were already having a hard time. And then when the trade wars came, it was kind of like the, the final kind of kick in a lot of farmers. Um, but we really need to look at that. We have an ag economy. We have m major you know, ag manufacturers here in our backyard. And it's a trickle down. If farmers aren't making money, they're not buying tractors. And so it really has an economic impact here that I think is going to start rippling, um, you know, for quite some time. Once again, precincts are going to be opening at 7 o'clock. You have to, well, actually opening at 6.30. Yes, you have to be in there by 7 o'clock. Um, all precincts will have to be open by 6.30. In areas where we can get in earlier, you definitely can show up earlier um, if the precinct chair is able to get that location opened up earlier. And how important is it to caucus for 
for Iowa's, Iowans to prove themselves to the nation? Well, I just think it's an incredible opportunity. Um, you know, it's so unique. It's just really democracy at its purest, and, and people get out. And not only that, you get to meet your neighbors. Um, there's so few things where we kind of con come in human contact with one another these days with technology. And so it's just really a really good way to build community as well. Scott County Democratic Chair, Alicia Gaiman, thank you so much for joining us. Good luck Monday. Thank you. Republicans are counting on you to do a good job as well, you know, because the better the caucuses run, the better it is for both parties. Correct, yes. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. Now, once again, the Iowa caucuses are Monday, February 3rd. They start promptly at 7, so arrive early. If you get there late, you won't be able to participate. Now, you can go to both parties' websites for full details on how to caucus. Those details are at iowademocrats.org and iowagop.org. We might be getting a little bit of cabin fever these days. It doesn't have to be that way. Here's Laura Adams. She's out and about. This is Out and About for January 27th through February 2nd. The city of Bettendorf hosts the 2020 Winter Carnival February 1st from 10 till 2. It's free with activities at the Library, Family Museum, Faze Field, Frozen Landing, Palmer Hills Golf Course, and the Life Fitness Center. A shuttle service is available. Western Illinois University Quad Cities continue their Earth Hour series with a conservation program featuring Richard Stewart, January 29th in the QCC Atrium on campus. Ready, set, think. The German American Heritage Center is hosting their second annual Trivia Night January 31st at 7. Or gather your team for the 15th annual Putt Around at the River Center January 29th through 31st. The Quad City Arts Gallery present the exhibit The Artist Behind the Tattoo January 30th through March 20th. Or grab your flashlight for a flashlight tour, a nocturnal adventure at the Hallberg Estate on January 31st at 6.30. Beverages available. It's time for the annual Chili Open Golf Classic at Red Hawk Golf Course on February 1st, and Buck Cherry Live performs at the Rust Belt February 1st at 7, while Squirrel Nut Zippers perform at the River Music Experience the 29th at 7.30. The Black Box Theater in downtown Moline honors International Holocaust Remembrance Day with their production of I Never Saw Another Butterfly running through February 1st. For more information, visit wqpt.org. Thank you, Laura. Tony Heppner is a singer, songwriter, and guitarist who is best known for the band he formed with three buddies, Tony Heppner and Friends. But he came to the Black Box Theater in Moline to let us hear some of his original work. So here's Tony Heppner and Heart to Heart. There's an old man sitting on a park bench talking to the birds and the rabbits that run on by him. He was married in 1946, the love of his life, and they had three kids. Never spent a day apart, always heart to heart, just like a Sunday. In a preacher's sermon, you could tell their love was surely heaven sent. Well, they worked every day just to make ends meet. Times were hard, but the love was sweet. Never spent a day apart, always heart to heart. And they were so young when they got married. But it was true love, kept the fire burning hot. And the blink of an eye, it all passed by. He could only wonder why Never spent a day apart Always heart to heart November brought the cold How did life get so old? The leaves all fell down Now his time with her was gone His time with her was gone Now there's an old man Sitting on the front porch Talking to the birds Rabbits that run on by He was married in 1946 The love of his life And they had three kids Never spent a day apart Always heart to heart
Tony Hepner and Heart to Heart, Tony and musician Jim Van Acker will be at Tucker's in Port Byron Saturday, February 1st. For 40 years, Com University has been a February staple in the cities, offering classes for adults during the cold month of February. It was poised to end last year because of troubles finding students, teachers, and actually new people to help run it. But that's the past, and Com University is back right now. And joining us is one of the 2020 Com University lecturers, Dr. Bill Haps. Thanks so much for joining well, us. Thank you. You didn't really leave, but you had the fear last year was going to be the last year of Com University. And what made it so important to bring it back? Um, the people. Yeah. Um, uh, Blackhawk College received a lot of feedback from a lot of people how nice it would be to have a continuation of Com University. So the out, our outreach center at Blackhawk College decided, let's let's make a go of it. Let's see if we can do it ourselves. And even though the outreach center has really had just a few months to get it together, um, I think they've done an outstanding job of getting teachers and publicizing Com University and organizing the classes and getting it all ready to go um, this Sunday. Because for years it had, had been held at St. Ambrose, mm -hmm. now it's going to be at Black Hawk College. What does it provide to the community? Because I'll tell you the truth, when, when I was part of it uh, for two years mm -hmm. taking the classes, it was just a great idea to get you out of the house in February mm -hmm. and you didn't have to necessarily stand outside much. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's um, a really great opportunity for people in the Quad Cities to be exposed to all kinds of different ideas and to develop all kinds of different skills. Um, roughly, there's two kinds of classes. First of all, there's the what you might call the informational classes, like the one I'm teaching on the psychology of humor, where students who are very curious about subject can come to learn about it and discuss the ideas in that subject. Then we have another group of classes like brush painting and knitting where you learn to do a skill, the kind of skill that people have wanted to learn for years but have never really had the opportunity. And they can do all this without the pressure of grades and papers no and being exams. evaluated. And very, if I do say so myself, very friendly instructors. And, and that's kind of the point too, is that it's called Com University for <laughs> a reason. It really is bringing the university and the community together. Exactly. Um, and I, I think it's just another way of learning that makes it easier for people to, as I've said, learn new skills and learn new ideas and discuss those ideas. It is also kind of, how do I say this, very informal, is it not? Because like you said, uh, and I, I took your class, mm -hmm. as, you, as you remember, from two years mm -hmm. ago, and, and it's, uh, uh, you want more participation, but if people don't want to participate, they can sit back and just enjoy it. it, it, it it's really a low pressure community classroom. Exactly. Um, the way I teach my class is, of course, obviously I present ma some material, but I let the students know that I'm very open to their ideas. In fact, I welcome discussion. Um, and very often the students come up with some very interesting ideas, uh, which I think not only uh, stimulate the other students, but stimulate me as well. And I have a little break in between so we can take it easy uh, and, you know, relax for a while and then uh, we get back to the second half of the class and again we can I continue talking continue getting feedback from the students um, and I think it's a very enjoyable way of learning without the pressure that you might find in a more academic kind of session uh, now, you can go to situation. the you yeah. can go to the Black Hawk College website it's a uh, Black Hawk College, bhc.edu, mm -hmm. bhc.edu, and you can find out how to register, of course, but you can also find a listing of the classes that are being offered. Mm -hmm. it, it's kind of, and, and let's be honest, if, if some classes don't fill up, you're, you're, you've got other options that you can, you can do. Right, exactly. Typically, when you register, you put, you're asked to put a second option. Uh, and not only can you go to the website um, to register for the course, um, you can go to the Outreach Center, 301 Avenue of the Cities in East Moline, right by First Midwest Bank and Adolph's, and you can register in person, or you can call the Outreach Center um, at 309-796-8223. Well done, um, well uh, done. <laughs> um, and you, but you're gonna need to do that uh, if you're gonna go visit the Outreach Center or call them. You're gonna have to do that in the next two days on Thursday, and Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. 
Um, also, if you can't do any of that, you can just show up the first day on Sunday, um, somewhere between 1 and 2 o'clock, and register on site. So we do accept walk-ins on that first Sunday. And if you can't make it on the first Sunday, I mean, you're still welcoming people oh, sure, later sure. on. I, I certainly would welcome people into my class. So sure, if you uh, can't make it that first Sunday, um, see about coming the next Sunday. There's so many different classes that are being offered, and as you said, I mean, yours has to do with humor. Um, I took one on uh, a religion class mm -hmm. uh, one, one year. Uh, it, it's, it, it really lets you also kind of explore your beliefs and, and perhaps helps you question some of the things that you thought mm -hmm. were a certain way. Yes, um, I think you'll find that the classroom is very congenial. Uh, generally, the instructors are open to the ideas of the students, even if the students' ideas don't necessarily jibe with what the instructor has been saying. Sure. Um, students are very respectful of each other's and each other's opinions. So I think you can really get a pretty good dialogue between the students and the teacher and amongst the students themselves, uh, which really enhances the learning experience. We know what the students can get out of it. Obviously, you're getting something out of mm -hmm. it as well. I mean, what, what do you enjoy about Com University? Well, I'll talk about my particular course. Uh, first of all, the psychology humor is fun. I just, I just enjoy showing clips of um, Louis Black and Jim Gaffigan and Bob Newhart and clips from various movies illustrating my, the concepts in the course. Um, and I really enjoy meeting new people. And I really am excited about meeting people and interacting with people who love the things that I love, uh, which is humor and psychology. And in particular, it's really neat for me to teach this particular course because I feel very strongly that if you know a person's style of humor, um, you basically understand that person and their personality. Um, and Humor to me is very central to life, despite what some people might say, because um, it involves creativity, it involves play, it's a great way that a person can uh, get away from their own particular perspective on the world and begin to open up to other perspectives besides their own. Dr. Bill Helms, thanks so much for Thank joining you. us from Com University. To register, you can head to bhc.edu for more information. We'd like to thank everyone who came out to WQPT's biggest fundraiser of the season, Champagne on the Rocks. You helped us raise money for public television programming and outreach throughout the area. And a special thank you to our premier event sponsors, Breedlove Legal and Expression Jewelers, and our keynote speaker, the president and CEO of PBS Program Services, Babette Davidson. It was a great night. We thank everyone for taking part. WQPT also has a commitment to military families in the cities. We call it embracing the military. And the Rock Island Arsenal's annual MWR Health Fair is just days away. More than 70 local businesses and organizations will be on hand to offer health-related information and resources at what's being called Wellness Rocks. Also, free items will be given away throughout the day, so mark it on your calendar. It's Wednesday, February 12th from 10 until 2 at the Fitness Center in Building 67 of the Rock Island Arsenal. On the air, on the radio, on the web, and on your mobile device, thanks for taking some time to join us as we talk about the issues on the cities. A proud supporter of this program, Riverbend Food Bank's vision is a hunger-free Iowa and Illinois. Wheelan Presley Funeral Home and Crematory has been serving Quad City families since 1889. Wheelan Presley Funeral Homes are located in Rock Island, Milan, and Reynolds and are proud supporters of WQPT.